Welcome back inside the Burns Arena. We missed the play. They call a foul against 60 State. They did. It was called on Chesney Stevens. They, uh, pretty sure they signaled for the media timeout before on that last timeout. They signaled that it would be a full timeout, and then they hurried the players back out there. We'll keep it right here through this timeout and kind of talk that through. Dixie State off to an 11 2 uh, lead after Colorado, Western Colorado scored first. Grayson, what's been the key for you? This Dixie State 11-0 run to jump out, take this lead. Well, it's like I mentioned a little bit earlier. It seems like today they're they're not being too complacent and settling for shots. I think last night against a good defensive team, you got a little bit antsy to try to just settle for the first open shot you got. And I don't think they've been doing that tonight. They've been moving within their offense, running screens, running cuts, back doors, that kind of thing. Instead of just maybe running a high pick and roll and then and throwing up a three-pointer or trying to find someone in the, on a wing or a corner to shoot a three-pointer. But I think you're executing your offense a little bit better. There's a lot more motion, a lot more movement, and especially a lot more passing and energy, which is really a key against a good defensive team. Absolutely. And the Trailblazers, again, over the last five minutes of game time, it's been an 11-0 run after Western Colorado scored on the first possession of the game. It was Katie Dalton calmly knocked down a jumper. And they've been scoreless ever since. But Kanzler to the free throw line. But just a 54% free throw shooter is Kanzler, 19 of 35. From the vintage at Canyonlands free throw line. And the Mountaineers go 458 of time worth of scoreless basketball. And, and the drought continues after a missed free throw. Kanzler misses the first free throw. I almost said Dantzler. If I do say that tonight for you Western Colorado fans listening, we have a, a player on our football team named Dewan Dantzler. And there was a player so last night for Colorado Mesa's named, men's team named, named Dancer. Dancer. And, so and I apologize if I ever slip up and make that mistake. Second free throw is up and in for Kanzler. And it's an 11-3 Dixie State lead. Still over five minutes now without a field goal for Western Colorado. The Trailblazers try to add to the lead. Stevens, pump fake. To the free throw line, lets a jumper fly, misses it, and then tracks down her own rebound. Yeah, that was a long rebound, and Chesney Stevens got an open look there at about 18 feet away, but stayed with it and got her own board. Pavlika inside, scoop and score. A little double clutch in the air, and then banked it off the backboard. A 13-3 Dixie State lead. It's double figures now. Well, Pavlika's so athletic, the 5'7 sophomore guard from Las Vegas, Nevada. We said she can get in the basket whenever she wants to. Here's Cooper. Will fire a three. Misfires. A miss off the right side. Dixie State has the rebound ahead to Loftus. 13-3, Dixie State the lead. Pavlika will hand off to Franks. Franks. To Loftus now inside Stevens working on Kanzler. Stevens back to Franks with eight to shoot. Three-point land straight away with five. Crossing over to her left to the elbow. Fires a jumper and it goes. And Dixie State making up for all those missed shots. From last night, all here in the first quarter, a 15-3 Trailblazer lead. They certainly are, and a good job from Allie Franks to not panic with a low shot clock situation, to not panic, get to her spot, and get a nice look at the basket. Kanzler, top of the key for Erickson, missed a three, and London Pavlika snags the rebound. Pavlika across half court. Will settle into the offense, crossing over to her left and gives to Loftus, has to chase down the pass, and has it 40 feet from the bucket. And off to Pavlika. Still way out there. Three-point land straight away. Backdoor look for Franks. Catch, dribble, foul. Two free throws for Allie Franks. And this Dixie State offense looks completely different than last night. And could have a lot to do with, you know, Colorado Mesa, the top scoring defense in the country. But the Trebles right. just look more comfortable. They, they look like they're executing better out there. Yeah, and I just think they're, they're just being smarter with their offensive possessions. They're not forcing it. As you see on that last play, Jesse Erickson, who was guarding Allie Franks, hedged over to help Pavlika. And Allie Franks, being the four-year senior that she is, recognizes that her defender is helping off. She immediately cuts to the basket. Pavlika, the good passer that she is, finds her. Now, Allie Franks doesn't, commit, you know, doesn't, doesn't make the foul, but she draws contact to go to the free throw line. Absolutely. Missed the first. She'll have one more. Second on the way up and in. 16 to three, Dixie State the lead. It's a 13 point advantage. And Katie Dalton will check back in, who has the only Western Colorado field goal of the night. And that field goal was all the way back at the 9.53 mark. The first possession of the game. Three minutes remaining. Here's Western Colorado, Dowd. 
Looking inside, it's Cooper. Kicks it back out to Dowd. We'll swing it near side, Samantha Coleman. Coleman off a screen from Dalton. Will fire a three, misses off the left side. And out of bounds off of Tatum Coleman. Underneath the basket. London Pavlika flying it in there. Yeah, and she'll get a breather. She's not going to get the, the, the rebound on the box score, but she was the reason that they got that ball back. She didn't hesitate. She went right up to the basket to try to grab that rebound. She didn't actually secure it, but forced it to go off a Mountaineer. Ashley Greenwood and Brianna Gillen into the game for the Trailblazers and Brianna Moyati. Here's Greenwood. Greenwood was absolutely draining threes in warm-ups tonight. Loftus to Gillen. Gillen to the free throw line to Greenwood with seven to shoot. Three-point land straight away. Is tripped and falls. No whistle for a travel or a foul. Loftus, a deep three straight away as the shot clock expires. And she got it. 19 to three, a trailblazer lead of 16. And maybe that's just one of the better signs that Dixie State's had in the last couple of games. Western Colorado, three the other way, missed it. Ball pinballs around, and it rolls to the feet of Gabby Dowd, and she'll pick it up, and the Mountaineers have another try at it. And this would be incredible for the Trailblazers if they can continue this. To hold the Mountaineers to just a single field goal. Here's Dalton. She'll say, nope, going to make it at least two field goals. She's got all five. Well, she's got four of the five for Western Colorado. Kanzler has a free throw. 19 to five, a 14 point Dixie State lead. And that stopped a scoreless stretch of over eight minutes for the Mountaineers. Greenwood trying to sneak a pass inside and it's stolen. There comes WCU. Cooper. To the elbow right side. I think off to Dowd. Dowd guarded by Gillen. Gillen to Samantha Coleman. Passing inside, tipped by Moyati, stolen by Gillen. Gillen ahead to Loftus. Off the window, draws the contact, free throws coming for Matty Loftus in the Trailblazers. And that was a brilliantly brilliantly run uh, fast break there. As you see, Gillen passed it ahead to Loftus, recognized that she was going to be one-on-one -on -one with Tate, Tatum Coleman. And Loftus does a good job. A lot of times when you get a one-on-one -on -one matchup like that, you'll fade away or you'll try to jump stop and, and pull up. She goes into the contact, forcing Coleman to the hitter and, and make the contact. She doesn't make the shot, but she goes to the free throw line, an excellent free throw shooter. 92% yeah. is Maddie Loftus from the free throw line this year. Now 46 of 50 from the stripe. Makes both, and I believe that is leads the RMAC in free throw percentage. Interestingly enough, if you go and you look at it on the RMAC website, her name's not listed. We're working on that with the conference to get that there, but she does lead the RMAC in free throw percentage. Gillen gets her feet tangled up with Gabby Dowd, and she'll be whistled for the foul with 41 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Yeah, just kind of an unfortunate break there for Dixie State. Gillen just gets her feet tangled up like you mentioned, and she calls for the foul. 21 to five, Dixie State a 16 point lead. Western Colorado with the possession. 32 seconds remaining in the first and a touch foul. Gonna go against Brianna Moyai. As they got her in the back. 31.9 seconds remaining first quarter. Dixie State a 21 to five lead. It will be Tatum Coleman. The trigger baseline right for the Mountaineers. Coleman, a lob to Dalton. Dalton to Samantha Coleman. Coleman crossing over to her left, getting inside to the left, missing a runner, tapped around. Deshka Olsen will chase down the long rebound for the Trailblazers. Here's Greenwood as Cooper tried to pickpocket it, but Greenwood was able to get away from her. 12 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Here's Greenwood just across half court right side. Now she springs into action, dribbles off her foot, and Dalton going to chase it down with four. With three, with two, fires a shot with one, and she misses just short with Ashley Greenwood in her face. A turnover to end the quarter, but still a marvelous start for Dixie State. They lead it 21 to five after 10 minutes of basketball. We'll step away after this one minute timeout on the Trailblazer Basketball Network. Radio Dixie 91.3. We don't play that. Nope, not that.
a big fat no there. That's what we play. And stuff like that. On St. George's only alternative, Radio Dixie 91.3. Oh, and from 9 till midnight, we play this. I need a one And this. Radio Dixie 91.3 FM. Are we there yet? Yep. We're here. It's a short drive from your neighborhood to your naturehood. To find a neighborhood park or green space near you, visit discovertheforest.org. Twenty-one to five, Dixie State a sixteen-point advantage after the first quarter, holding Western Colorado to just five points. And here we go, Trailblazers for the first possession of the second. Loftus, top of the key for Franks. Franks will bounce to Stevens, catching on the right elbow, looking into the paint now. Franks into the corner, Kesley Stevenson for three. You betcha! And what a great side for Kesley Stevenson. 24 to 5, the Trailblazers a 19 point lead with 9.33 to go. And once again, all created by the movement within the offense and making the extra pass. Pavlika finding Stevenson in the corner. Cooper will drive inside. Shot blocked. At least we thought it was blocked by Chesney Stevens. Are they going to get Pavlika? Was she, I think she was trailing the play. No, Pavlika stepped over. That's if they called that on one, that's wrong. Pavlika was not even in the play, and they need to review that because Pavlika was nowhere near the play. It had to be either on Stevens, or maybe it was on maybe it was on Kesley Stevenson because Pavlika was nowhere near the play. He said it. He said eleven. They, that's right. They're, they're but he did signal one right off the bat, and now they get it fixed. That would have been St uh, Pavlika's second foul. So the foul does go against Stevenson. Both free throws are good for the Mountaineers. And obviously, you know, want to want to keep London yeah. Pavlik again. The game two fouls, two fouls early in this first half would, would have to make it ride the pine, you know, minor, majority of the first half. And obviously, with what Pavlik brings to your offensive team and yeah. even defensively with rebounds, you want to keep her in the game as long as you can. Absolutely. Had to double check that one. Stevens, left corner three, too strong. Rims out Courtney Humbarger up for the rebound. That one doesn't fall, but still a good pass and a good find by Kessie Stevenson to find Stevens in the corner. Felicia Bacon handing off to Tatum Coleman, back to Bacon, three-point land straight away. Penetrates, kicks it back out, three-pointer straight away from Dowd, and it rolls around and in. And it's 24 to 10. Dixie State a 14-point lead, 840 remaining. The first points of the afternoon for the 5'10 senior from Huxley, Iowa, the 10.3 points per game, only player averaging double figures for this Mountaineers team. Stevenson, top of the key for Pavlika. The left elbow and Stevens. Stevens to Loftus. Loftus kills the dribble, gives to Franks. Three point land straight away, drives to the left, gets past her defender, she'll lay it up and in with the right hand. That was just a beautiful move by Ali Frank. She sized up her defender at the top of the key. She faked right, got to her left hand, and got all the way to the bucket. Dowd jumps another three straight away. A quick look at a three, and she'll miss it. Dixie State the rebound. That was just a little bit of a heat check from Gabby Dowd after hitting that previous three on the last possession. Try to see how hot she really was. And Maddie Loftus is fouled. She's going to be a little slow to get up. She was fouled initially, then went to the ground. And the Western Colorado player that fouled her then kind of landed on her head as they both lost their footing. You're going to see it right here. It's Humbarger. And he goes down and lands on her. And maybe got in the left shoulder yeah. or the left arm there. So the foul will go against Humbarger. She stayed to maintain possession. And to Stevenson. Stevenson, great look to Franks, and she'll lay it up and in. Stevenson could have taken a contested look, but passed it up for a better shot. And Dixie State sharing the ball, sixth assist of the night for the Trailblazers. And there was so much movement on that out of bounds play. I mean, Stevenson could have got a good shot, but she passed it up to Franks to get a great shot. 28 to 10, Dixie State the lead. Here's a free throw line jumper from Dalton. Too strong, and Pavlika the rebound. Bodies falling all over. And here comes Pavlika up the right side. 7.22 to go, second quarter. 
Dixie State an 18-point lead. A backdoor look for Loft is too much on it and stolen away by Katie Dalton. Yeah, Pavlika tried to keep that one away from the defender whose hand was in the passing lane, but just threw it just a little bit too far out of the reach of Maddie Loftus. Good recovery by Loftus to get back into defensive position. Humbarger looked like she was going to have an open look at three. Loftus was able to get back. Here is Humbarger, left side, working on Loftus. Left-handed layup over the rim, and Kesley Stevenson chase down the rebound. Ahead to Loftus. Rim at the right side. They're working around the horn. Here's Franks. Dribble handoff, Stevenson, top of the key, bouncing inside for Pavlika, what a look. And she'll lay it up and in, and it's a 20-point lead for the Trailblazers, 30 to 10. Western Colorado wants timeout. Coach Westling says, here we go again. We gotta talk this over again. 20-point lead for the Trailblazers. Yeah, and what can you say more? I mean, this is just almost looks like two different teams from, from tonight and a few of the other games we've seen in the past, especially last night. There's so much more movement and they're just playing smart and finding the open, the open player, and they're getting great looks like that one from London Pavlika after a nice backdoor cut. Timeouts brought to you by Dairy Queen. Remember, I say this every night, but remember, if you sign up for the DQ mobile app, Drayson, you can receive a free small blizzard and new deals every week. So you're telling me if I go all you, you got to right do now, is just get the DQ mobile the app, DQ mobile sign app, up, and I can get a free and or, you have a, you a know, free you Oreo blizzard. Redeem a free small Oreo blizzard or a cookie jar blizzard. I'm doing that on the way home. Okay. Doing Let's it do it on the way home. Remember, this is fan food, not fast food. Trailblazers a 20-point lead, 30 to 10, 636 remaining. Pavlika with seven. Ali Franks with 12 already, five of seven from the field. A rebound and assist for Franks as well. And the Trailblazers trying to put that loss last night behind them and say we're going to keep moving forward. They got to go out on a embark on a four-game road swing starting next week. They want to get a win here at home before the. And it's the Mountaineers inside. Kanzler will score on the layup, and she's fouled by Stevens, and a couple of free throws coming for Jaden Kanzler. Yeah, and you see there, Stevens just got off her feet. Every, anytime you leave your feet, you put yourself into a bad defensive position. And a good job by Kanzler and a pump fake to get Stevens off her feet, and then she kind of just absorbed the contact, finished through it, and threw the foul on top of that. Kanzler, 54% free throw shooter, misses the free throw. Deshka Olsen will chase down the long rebound. 30 to 12. Dixie State finished last night's game with 51 points. They've got 30 at the 6.06 mark of the second. Franks, baseline left, passes out, looking for Pavlika. It's tipped and it goes to Stevenson. To the right side of Olsen, thought about a three. Instead, the left eagle skip past to the left side of Pavlika. Left wing with five to shoot, gotta find some help. To Moyai, free throw line with two, throws up a shot, it's blocked, and she's gonna, she's holding her right arm, and the play will go the other way. Mountaineers the rebound and a foul from Deshka Olsen and Moyai trailing the play. Lisa looked like she was grabbing the arm. Hard to tell from that angle to see what might have happened on that play, but certainly Moyai in a lot of pain. Not sure what it is that Maybe the left arm, yeah, that she's reaching to the left wrist perhaps. She's kind of hunched over, yeah, like it might almost be her back, but it certainly seems like she's no. favoring maybe the left but arm or some sort. As Samantha Coleman gets set to go to the free throw line, she, you know, she's going up, you almost resemble the quarterback getting ready to throw a pass. The ball gets knocked out of the quarterback's hand and the arm still keeps going forward as Coleman makes the first free throw. As we'll take another, well this was Coleman getting fouled. Both free throws up and in for Coleman, but you saw Moyat, you go up, and she was trying to get the ball out quickly, and the ball came out, and then her arms were hit as the momentum still kept going. Hope she's okay. 30 to 14, Dixie State, a 16 point lead with 5.25 to go. Pass inside to Michaela Johnson, and she'll lay it up and in for two. Lori Westling wanted an offensive foul against, I believe it was Pavlika making that pass. Running over a defender, did not get the whistle though. Here's Cooper inside. Scoop it, can't get it. Michaela Johnson, the big rebound. 
Yeah, Johnson's going to be huge now with Moyai out. Stevens yeah. has two fouls already. Pavlika, right elbow jumper in transition, swish. And, and it's a 20 point lead again, 34 14. What can London Pavlika do? She pulls up there from 15 feet on the previous possession. She's the one that finds Michaela Johnson off the drive and kick. Two great possessions back to back for London Pavlika. 34 14. Kanzler to the left side, Tatum Coleman. Coleman to Erickson, backing in on Franks, misses. And Michaela Johnson has the rebound again, and she's fouled. And Kanzler at six foot two. Know, could match up with Johnson at six foot three, but she wasn't around to help with that. And Johnson just goes up and says, that's my ball. Yeah, one thing you didn't see on that start of that play, London Pavlika is not going to get any credit in the box score, but she comes down and she kind of just reaches in to Jesse Erickson and kind of disrupts her rhythm a little bit. And that's why that the shot was errant and giving the Johnson the opportunity to come down with a rebound. Franks at the free throw line, passes up the shot, gives to Maddie Loftus left wing. Loftus fires back inside to Franks. One more pass, Pavlika, spot up three, right wing. Yes, sir. Up and in, you betcha. 37-14, Dixie State a 23-point lead. And Pavlika with 12 points, five of six shootings, four rebounds, three assists. What can't she do? Yeah, and save that play for the first half highlights back in the truck because that one was one of the beautiful, most beautiful plays this yeah. season so far for this women's basketball team. Kanzler forcing the shot inside. Misses, Dixie State the rebound, and let's set that one aside, that last three-point shot for Dixie State as a catering concept play of the game nominee. No doubt about it, another Mountain America three-pointer from Dixie State. Trailblazers with possession. Pavlika to Frank, dribbling from left to right, jumps it from the free throw line, it'll bounce around and fall out. 37-14. Just about every part of the rim before coming out, thought that one might have got the friendly shooter's touch. Cooper to Erickson right side, misses the jumper. Pavlika has the rebound, and it's tied up by Tatum Coleman. And it'll be a jump ball, possession arrow favoring the Mountaineers. Again, Pavlika working hard. She's the first one to this one. She secures the rebound, and then it's tied up immediately thereafter by Coleman. But again, these high energy plays, especially from, from multiple different players. I mean, obviously Pavlika does this on a daily basis, but Chesney Stevens early on, Michaela Johnson, even the last two minutes that she's been in, she's scored offensively, got a couple of big rebounds. And that kind of energy, you know, is, is contagious and it radiates throughout the team and it's really helped them get out to a 37-14 lead. Western looking back door for Dowd. She'll catch it, force it up baseline left. And Michaela Johnson, the big rebound, but her pass is stolen by Tatum Coleman to Dowd. And no, she traveled. She got the layup to go, but she traveled first. And how about the play? I know, and I know she turned it over after the rebound. But Michaela Johnson has come in and said, this is my time. I'm going to get some minutes here with, like you said, Stevens with a couple of fouls and Moyai out. He said, this is my time to shine. Stevenson right wing three, around it in. She's two for two from beyond the arc tonight. And this could be a big night for Kessley, and she needs it. And it's so nice for her. We know the kind of three-point shooter that she is. Struggled so far this season. I know she hopes to get that chance turned around. And a block for Michaela Johnson. Absolutely denies Samantha Coleman at the bucket. Here come the Trailblazers. Pavlika to the free throw line. Loftus for three. Yes! Literally every single shot that would not fall last night is falling tonight, and it's a 29-point lead, 43-14, to 2.20 to go until halftime. And this is unbelievable. This is by far the best Dixie State has played all season long and, and a much-needed time coming against a good Western Colorado team. Here's Cooper, guarded by Stevenson. Stevenson gets the block on Cooper, but it goes back into the hands of Dalton, and she's fouled with a bucket. It will be Stevenson picking up the foul, her second. Yeah, that's just a good play there by Katie Dalton, get that offensive rebound and go up, up with it and finish through contact. But how about London Pavlika right now? Officially, let's, once again, I mean, we know she comes in on triple-double watch every single night, but today, 12 points, five rebounds, five assists. We've still got two minutes to go in the second period. However, she did just come out, yeah. substitute out, so probably likely done for the first half, but officially put tri London, London Pavlika on triple-double watch. Here's Brianna Gillen, left wing, is has it stripped away, knocked out of her hands, and then she kicks it. Looks over to the bench and says, it's my bad. 
1.51 to go. And, and you know, you've got a big lead right now, 43 to 17, but Coach Gustin wants to see some of these players from that second unit make some plays here. You've got Greenwood, Johnson, Gillen, Olsen, and Loftus on the floor right now for the Trailblazers. Here's Samantha Coleman. Pick and roll looking inside to Dowd. Goes up high, grabs it with one hand. Cross court pass to Dalton. Left side working on Johnson. Lays it up and in. Johnson reaching in there. Probably lucky she didn't get called for another foul. And it's 43 to 19 now. Dalton the one bright side for the Mountaineers. She's got nine. And Dixie State. The 43-19 advantage with 113 until halftime. Olsen. Right wing. Now to Gillen. Left elbow. Backing in on Dowd. Stops the dribble. Kicks out to Loftus. Eight to shoot. Maddie has it stolen away. Tried to split two defenders, and it's swiped by Hannah Cooper. Cooper will force the shot up in transition, and she's fouled by Brianna Gillen. And one thing you got to be weary of here if you're Dixie State, Western Colorado already on a 5 nothing run over the previous minute and a half or so. And, you know, if you get them a little bit a little bit momentum, they're obviously going to the free throw line for two more here. They're going to get one more possession. You don't want them to go into halftime with a 9-0 run, a 10-0 run, and feel like they have any momentum. Obviously, you're up by 23 right now. It could be 22 if Cooper makes this free throw. But you want to go down, get one final offensive possession, maybe get a bucket or a three and try to put an end to this run and get a defensive stop going into halftime. Don't let them feel like they have any momentum going into the third quarter. Both free throws up and in for Hannah Cooper. 43-21, 22-point lead for the Trailblazers. Maggie McCord will check in to give Maddie Loftus a breather before the halftime break. So on the floor for Dixie State, it's Greenwood, Gillen, McCord, Olsen, Johnson. Here's Ashley Greenwood with 18 to shoot, bouncing to McCord, right wing, and it's stolen away. Three consecutive steals for Western Colorado. A team that averages 6.6 .6 steals per game. Excuse me, that's Dixie State's number. Eight steals per game. Top of the key, here's Coleman for three. Too strong. Maggie McCord goes up high, grabs the rebound, hat off to Gillen. Gillen pushing it up the floor. Has it knocked out of her hands? Did it go off of her knee? It did not. It'll stay with Dixie State. 18.1 seconds remaining. And you can tell Western Colorado is really trying to ramp up the intensity on defense, trying to get a few steals and turnovers to try to get back into this game. Here's Greenwood, 14 seconds remaining in the half, and at the very least, Dixie State wants to make sure that this is the final possession of the half. Greenwood to Michaela Johnson, working on Dalton, will force up a jumper. She's fouled in the paint, and she'll get two free throws. A savvy move by Michaela Johnson. Yeah. Couldn't fill Dalton with both arms right in her back, so she just went to work on it. Yeah, and that was kind of a bailout there from Dalton. That's going to be her second personal foul, which is going to be good going into the halftime break. But Michaela Johnson usually likes to work around the, you know, around the restricted area. A little bit out of her range on that one, but the foul sends her to the free throw line. To miss the first free throw off the front end. Have one more with 2.4 seconds remaining. And a second. Missed them both. Rebound for Dowd. And she's going to be fouled on the way up the floor. Are they going to say three they, shots on this one? Oh, no. There, there's no way she's shooting this. I mean, you're not going to call it a shooting foul 65 feet away from the basket. With still. They're going to give her three free throws. She misses the first. I mean, when that foul occurred, there was still two seconds on the clock. I mean, it wasn't even an, an absolute have to shoot it situation. She make the second. Yeah, and I, and I don't, I don't. Man. I mean, it, it was certainly was a foul, but you can't. I mean, give it would have been two free throws anyway. Dixie State's in, you know, in the bonus, but Coach Gustin having that conversation with the officials. She did miss the first, and we'll get two points out of it. Inbound pass to Olson, and she'll just dribble it out. It'll be a 20 point. Dixie State lead, 43-23. What a half for the Trailblazers. However, Western Colorado will take a 9-0 run into the locker room. And Dixie State, of course, they finished that last couple of minutes with most of the starters on the bench. And they'll come back in and play in the second half. But overall, a fantastic half for the Trailblazers. You have Pavlika with 12, Franks with 12, Loftus with 8, Kesley Stevenson with 6, 
Chesney Stevens with three, Michaela Johnson with two, and the Trailblazers off to a 20 point lead. Let's take some look at our first half highlights. I should say take a look at our first half highlights. And that's the Boulevard Mattress race. Now here we go. Dixie State gonna start it defensively. A block on one end. Chesney Stevens, a three from the left corner, and Dixie State was off to the races after that. London Pavlika getting inside, you know, scoop and score off the window. The Trailblazers did it just about every way you could possibly do it in the first half. Yeah, they were hitting all their shots that they weren't making last night, and they haven't really made for two or three games now. And you see here just being scrappy. This was the, the three-pointer at the end of the shot clock there for Maddie Loftus, and a really good sign that they were going to be making their shots today. Allie Franks once again, she has 12 first-half points getting to the bucket with the left hand and she was a huge part, and then obviously this was the play out of bounds where Allie, Allie Franks makes a nice cut, and Stevenson finds her for the basket underneath. Leslie Stevenson, a backdoor look for London Pavlika. You know, the Trailblazers will finish the half with 12 assists, and this play right here was our Catering Concepts play of the game. Nominee, as they work it around. Kesley Stevenson hit two threes in the first half, and that was big for the Trailblazers, and big for her confidence, as she's you know, been a little Cooler from the outside as of late. Maddie Loftus, another three. That would give the Trailblazers a 29-point lead at, at the time, and now they'll take a 20-point lead into the halftime break. And we just transition right into our Seven Oaks Jewelers halftime report. Seven Oaks Fine Jewelers is your one-stop shop for jewelry in St. George, Utah. Custom engagement rings, wedding bands, diamond earrings, custom laser engraving, and much more. Better get out and go shopping for your wife, Trace, and Valentine's Day is coming up. Head over to Seven Oaks Jewelers. I might have to do that. Trailblazers a 20 point lead and let's look at the numbers and, and see what that tells us. The Trailblazers, how about a blistering 69.6% from the field, 77% from the outside, seven for nine. And it, it's almost like, and we mentioned this from time to time, that Dixie State, and it wasn't just last night against Colorado Mesa. It's been these the, almost this entire homestand really, even the game they won against Colorado Christian. Uh, and, and, and some games before that too, just to say, we have not been making our open looks. Coach Gustin told us that, you know, pretty bluntly in the in the post game report last night. Because we said, you know, what do you do on a night like tonight? And he said, you know, I don't know how what else we could have done. We just had open looks that, that would go. Tonight they're falling, but it looks like they're shooting with more confidence though. Last night, it, there just was a different feel. Tonight there's definitely that, that confident feel. I think, you know, obviously, I don't want to say you're being backed up when your back's against the wall tonight. Still plenty of basketball to be played, but the Trailblazers came into tonight probably with the feeling like, you know, we've got to win this game. If we want to still accomplish our goals of hosting an RMAC tournament game. We've got to win this game and get back on the right track. We can't lose three in a row, especially at home. Yeah, and, and I think even, even uh, you know, going further than that, it just I, I bet Coach Gustin said, hey, let's just simplify the game a little bit. I mean, we're getting the shots that we want to, we're executing our offense well. We've proven that we can get the open looks. They had a ton of open looks last night against Colorado Mason. They just didn't knock them down. And for Coach Gustin to just say, hey, let's just simplify the game. Let's just run our offense. Let's get the open shots that we've been able to get. But let's just knock them down. Settle down a little bit more. Move within the offense. And then just knock down shots when you get them. And maybe just that approach has helped Dixie State settle down a little bit, take a few deep breaths, and say, hey, we can play with the best teams in the RMAC, and, and certainly they've proven that tonight with a 20-point lead at halftime against the second-best defense in this conference. And so I think they've really done a good job of being able to execute within their offense and then hit the open shots that they weren't hitting last night. And one of the things we mentioned last night, we talked about if you're a buyer into the law of averages, Dixie State is a good, a good three-point shooting team. I mean, coming into today's game, they were a 33% three-point shooting team three-point shooting as a team and so they've got a lot of three-point shooters that are capable of knocking them down obviously Kesley Stevenson, Maddie Loftus, Ali Franks, even London Pavlika, Deshka Olsen off the bench so they've got a lot of good three-point shooters but they haven't been shooting very well over the last you know two weeks or so but tonight they've been able to put it all together and have been hitting shots everywhere on the floor. Trailblazers at 43 to 23 advantage and they are off to the races tonight London Pavlika Continue to keep an eye on her uh, as we kind of look ahead at some Skywest Airline player of the game, you know, possibilities so far. Pavlika, 12, five and five right now. She can get five rebounds and five assists in the second half. For sure she'll be the Skywest Airlines player of the game. That's a storyline. Allie Franks after a quiet night last night. I would almost say that it's been a quiet 12 points for her. I mean, you know, 
she hasn't done a ton. She has uh, one three-point make. Other than that, she's got to the free throw line. She's scoring off cuts, you know, just kind of doing the little things. The next thing you know, you look down at the stat sheet, she's got 12. And uh, she's, she's charging ahead. She has a real shot at the number two spot in the all-time scoring list for uh, the Trailblazers. She'd have to get up around 1,068 points for her career, and she's just over 1,010 right now. And she's got a real shot at that second spot in the all-time scoring list this season. And uh, she's good to see her after a quiet night last night get back on the board. Maddie Loftus, after struggling a little bit from the field last night, eight points, was really happy and impressed with the six minutes that Michaela Johnson gave you in the first half. Thrust into action due to Brianna Moyotti coming out, you know, a little banged up. Uh, two points for Michaela Johnson, but four boards and a block. Really aggressive and just playing with an energy and a purpose inside. And you feel like you know, Dixie State, it's just it's all coming together tonight. And you hope that, you know, they played a great first half. And that's probably the message Coach Gustin's giving in the halftime break. Listen, this 20-point lead means nothing right now. we got to go out and, and do it all over again. Yeah, no doubt about it. You know, and I like what you said about Michaela Johnson because she's played very, very well in limited minutes over the previous two weeks that she's got gotten some action. And she came in and just like I mentioned, provided a spark and, and was playing very, very well. Was great on defense. I mean, obviously we know what the box score number says, but she also played very well and had some contested shots that she maybe not necessarily got the rebound on, but they were misses and then they got the possession back. So she's also provided a very, very good defensive presence in protecting the paint and she's been very good and it's such a luxury to be able to have a person like that come off your bench. We know Chesney Stevens is the starter and, and deservedly so obviously, but then Brianna Moyati is usually the first big off the bench for Dixie State. But when you can go three deep and have a quality talent like Michaela Johnson come off your bench, even as the third talent or, or the third person off your bench in that position, it gives you so much a, of a luxury knowing that if Stevens goes down with two fouls or an injury and the same thing with Moyati, you've got a third person there that can control the paint score if she needs to and get every offensive rebound or defensive rebound that she can and she's done very very well in limited minutes tonight let's take a look at your armac standings before we take our halftime break and we we came into this week and, and when we talked on our trailblazer weekly show which we got to give we got to give the shameless plug uh, every wednesday at 3 p.m drayson and i break down all things dixie state athletics and it really has evolved in, in just to a really fun hour where we get to interview you know, coaches or, or student athletes. And this next week, we're gonna be talking about uh, the the Greater Zion Stadium deal uh, for Dixie State and the football stadium and the soccer stadium down there. We're gonna be talking about basketball. We're gonna be talking about, you know, every, everything there is. Jack Pickenkoff went off in the men's game last night, put the team on his back and let him do a win. Talk about all that stuff. We break it down every Wednesday at three on CEC TV, on Radio Dixie 91.3 FM, and on the Dixie State Athletics YouTube page. And we went into this week talking about this women's team saying, listen, they got to at least split this weekend because, you know, two losses could knock you out of the top eight at this point. If you look at the standings right now, Dixie State has fallen down to the number seven spot in the RMAC standings right now. Colorado Mesa is 12-0. Westminster and Western are tied at 10-2. and Then Fort Lewis and Black Hill State, along with Colorado School of Mines, tied in that fourth spot at eight and four, and then the Dixie State at seven and five. MSU Denver in the eighth spot right now at six and six, tied with Colorado Christian. So that's how the standings shake out right now. Can give you a score update. Colorado Mesa leading Westminster 26 to 18 at the half. We'll go through, we're gonna take a break right now. We'll take a, we'll call it a four minute break right now. Just a four minute break, we'll come back. We'll give you some scores of, of these top eight teams in the RMAC. There's tons of games going on right now. But we'll look specifically at what Fort Lewis, Black Hill State, and Colorado School of Mines are doing right now. All eight and four, now one game ahead of the Trailblazers. Now keep in mind, Dixie State does have the head-to-head -head tiebreaker with both Black Hill State and Colorado School of Mines by virtue of, of wins over both those teams. Four-minute timeout and back. This has been your Seven Oaks Jewelers halftime report. Four-minute timeout and back with the second half of the Trailblazer Basketball Network. Hey, Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry. I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Can birds draw pictures? I don't have an answer for that. 
dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! For over a century, Dixie State University has been shaping the trailblazers of tomorrow by providing a culture of active learning, active life. With a paradigm of real-world experience mixed with cutting-edge technologies and rich traditions, we provide one of the most affordable educations in the West set against the most stunning backdrop on the planet. Where do you find the titans of classical music in St. George? Classical music on Radio St. George, 100.3 FM. Where do you find the legends of jazz? Evenings on Radio St. George, 100.3 FM. Welcome back inside the Burns Arena, Dixie State, a 43-23 lead over Western Colorado. And as promised, we do have some scores for you. We looked at the standings before the break, and Dixie State has dropped down into that seventh spot. And you look, it's just one game separating Dixie State, though, from the seventh spot and back up into the fourth spot. Fort Lewis, Black Hill State, Colorado School of Lions also in action tonight. Um, Shadron State, or Western, excuse me, Colorado School of Mines, a 68-37 lead over Shadron State at the end of the third quarter. War Diggers in control of that one. Here's one to keep an eye on throughout the rest of the night. CSU Pueblo, a 40-31 lead over Black Hill State in Pueblo. Tough place to play on the road. Uh, Fort Lewis, a 40-30 lead over Colorado Christian midway through the third quarter. So we'll kind of keep an eye on those two games the rest of the way. And, you know, we've reached that time of year. We're in the second half of the RMAC schedule. You're jockeying for position in the RMAC standings. And that not only do you play your game, but you kind of scoreboard watch a little bit and see what the other teams around you are doing. But more, most importantly tonight will be Dixie State maintaining this lead. Yeah, it's going to be uh, interesting to see how Dixie State will, fan, or will fare down the stretch against a lot of tough teams in the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference. And like you mentioned, Carrick, you know, they are down in seventh place right now after losing last night and, and losing 
uh, one game on the previous uh, weekend here at home. But one of the things you got to keep in mind is that they're so packed. They're so compressed there between, you know, even even three and, and seven or, or two and eight. There, there's not a whole lot of games separating two through eight in, in the bottom half of that conference. And so, you know, you win two games in a row and, and someone above you loses one or two, you are right back into it. You know, instead of being in seventh spot, you're three or four. Dixie State with the first possession of the third quarter. Both teams going original starters here. Franks driving over to a right to Stevenson. Now Pavlika. Pavlika, three-point land straight away to Chesney Stevens. A pump fake on Dalton. Will drive inside, kick to Loftus. Left wing with eight to shoot. Into the left corner, five to shoot. To Pavlika, four to shoot. Driving mid post left side, one to shoot. Throws it up, shot is blocked, and here come the Mountaineers. Yeah, that was just a tough waning shot clock situation. Pavlika was forced to throw that one up. Tried to spin away from her defender, but she got a hand on it. Dowd, three-pointer straight away. Rims in and out. Chesney Stevens. Taps the rebound to London Pavlika. Pavlika ahead to Loftus. Up the right side, will bounce inside. Franks, one-on-one, -on -one, working on the baseline right side with Dow. It'll bounce inside to Pavlika. Shot is blocked by Katie Dalton. Six foot two against London Pavlika, five foot seven, and Dalton won that battle. Yeah, Pavlika just got a little bit too far into the teeth of the defense there. 43-23, still scoreless through the first minute of the third quarter, and a whistle and a foul will ring out against Dixie State, and is it Chesney Stevens? No, it's Maddie Loftus, and that's her first foul. Could have spelled disaster for Chesney Stevens with two fouls. Trying not to pick up foul number three. Yeah, and you see there, Maddie Loftus just gets the left arm of Katie Dalton as she had to kind of collapse. Dalton got behind Stevens. Stevens reached back to try to get, you know, recover, but Maddie Loftus had to come over and help. 43-24, Dixie State. A 19-point lead now. It was as high as 29 points. Full, nope. They'll split the free throws. Second one looked like it was going to be in, popped out. And it's now a 10-0 run over the end of the second quarter and in early third quarter for the Mountaineers. And Dowd will be called for a bump against Allie Franks. That'll be her first, first team foul against the Mountaineers. The Trailblazers will have 21 seconds on the shot clock. Kesley Stevenson to inbound right in front of the Dixie State bench. Stevenson to Franks. Franks driving inside to the left. Will pull up a jumper, gets it to go, and they're going to wave it off. They're going to say offensive foul against Ali Franks on a push off before the shot. Yeah, and that one, Ali Franks doesn't love it, but you know, that one, yeah. not a whole lot of contact, but you know, anytime you kind of extend that right arm, which Ali Franks did, you're going to usually get called for it if your defender falls over. Not a great call, but I think it was the right one. Utah Jazz fans still waiting for that call for the 1998 NBA Finals on Michael Jordan. In pass to Dalton, and she's fouled, and that'll be the third on Chesney Stevens. And I think that must have been the game plan coming out of the halftime break for uh, Western Colorado, Pounded. is knowing that Chesney Stevens has those two fouls to try to go at her early. The first three possessions have all been down low, and in this one, they do draw the foul on Chesney Stevens. Third, third foul, she'll be forced to sit. The good news for Dixie State, Brianna Moyai back into the game. She's got the right bicep taped. He's back in as Dalton makes the first free throw, and it's an 18-point game. Trailblazers have yet to score in the third quarter. Dalton will make both free throws. And it's 43-26, 17-point lead. And the Trailblazers looking for their first points of the second half. Moyai, Dally Franks. To Moyai, thought about a three, decided against it from the right wing. Loftus to Pavlika, left side. Now to the right, bouncing to Franks. She'll chase it down with seven on the shot clock. Franks will drive inside, pump fake, will jump it. And a foul on the ground. They're going to wave the shot off. They said no shot, a foul on the ground against Dowd, her second. Yeah, it's going to be on Dowd. As she comes by, you're going to see the right hand of Dowd kind of slap Allie Franks across the face, and that's why they called it on the ground. She was not in her shooting motion yet. Franks going to be fouled again. Three quick fouls against Gabby Dowd, the leading scorer on the season for the Mountaineers. Tonight she's got five, but she'll pick up three fouls, and those have all come in the first three and a half minutes or two and a half minutes, I should say, 
of the third quarter. Yeah, that's just a heavy play by Allie Franks. Knowing she's got two fouls already, you go right at her and force her to make contact and put the referee in a situation where he has to make that call. Moya Idaloftis. Western Colorado has made some adjustments defensively, and they're not allowing any breathing room out on the wing now. Loftus will drive inside. A scoop with the left hand is short, and the rebound to Western Colorado. Yeah, they certainly have amped up their defensive pressure, especially on the perimeter, not allowing Dixie State to get to the rim easily. And they're going right back inside to Dalton. She'll miss it. A good look. Couldn't get it to go. Pavlika behind the back dribble on her way back up the floor. She holds three-point land straight away. Dixie State still looking for a bucket here. Loftus to Franks. Franks is going to get called for an offensive foul, and she did it again. She keeps extending the left arm. And Coach Gustin just telling her, hey, give a little jump stop and let the contact come to you. Don't stiff arm. Yeah, She's one, brought the left arm up both times. That one was a little bit more obvious than the previous one. I think certainly both of them were the right calls, but that one was a little bit higher, almost closer to the chin of her defender, and that one was a little bit more obvious and certainly a right call. If you're Dixie State, you got to keep your head here. You remember, you're the one with a 17-point lead, and now Pavlika called for a foul. And we... Just over three minutes into the third quarter, Dixie State in the bonus. Well, Western Colorado in the bonus. Five fouls against Dixie State already, and Pavlika clearly reaching down and getting Tatum Coleman on top of the shoulders. First free throw for Coleman is up and in, and it's 43-27. And if you're Dixie State, I mean, obviously, you've got to go back offensively to doing what you were doing in the first half. You were getting to the rim and making cuts and just executing your offense. Obviously, with a higher intensity defensive pressure, you've got to take just a little extra time to settle in and get back to what you were doing early in this game. 43-28. Dixie State, a 15-point lead. It was as high as 29 in the first half. Pavlika to Moyai. Give to Loftus. Loftus baseline left will throw it away. And Dixie State going to take a timeout, and that'll take us to a full timeout. 6.25 remaining. Dixie State a 43-28 lead. They got some things to figure out and tighten up here early third quarter. One minute timeout and back on the Trailblazer Basketball Network. back inside the Burns Arena, 6.25 to go in the third quarter. Trailblazers 0 for 3 from the field in the second half, and Western Colorado 0 for 2 from the field, but they've gotten to the free throw line. They're 5 of 6 from the free throw line in the third quarter, and that's been what's allowed them to chip this down to a 15-point lead. For the game, Western Colorado under 20% from the field at 6 for 31. Mountaineers with the possession. Erickson. To Dalton. Swing it right side to Samantha Coleman. Coming off the screen, gives back to Dalton. Pump fake drives the end line, and they're going to call a foul on Moyai. They're going to say she pushed off, and it's going to be free throws. The final 6 0 6 of the third quarter. Western Colorado going to live at the free throw line. This will be their seventh and eighth free throw attempts already in the third quarter. We've barely played four minutes. And it certainly seems like the referees have uh, tightened up their whistle a little bit or maybe loosened it up. I don't know. I don't know necessarily the terminology yeah. you use. Loosened up their whistle maybe and are calling, you know, maybe just a little bit more closely here and certainly a little bit of a deviation from what we saw in the first half. And yeah, it's tough. And in a player, you have to adjust to that. And Dixie State will. And it's down to a 13-point game. All seven points 
for Western Colorado in the third quarter have come from the free throw line. Michaela Johnson checks in. Dixie State looks to put a little size in down low. Stevenson for three left wing. Yes! Dixie State desperately needed that shot, and it's a 46-30 lead for the Trailblazers. Kesley Stevenson is three for three from the outside. And hopefully that just settles Dixie State down and get them back into what they were doing, get them back into a rhythm, and they're not panicking offensively. Inside Dalton working on Johnson. She'll miss it. And then it's tapped out of bounds by Dixie State. And Western Colorado will have it back. A little harder for Dalton to go over Johnson at 6-3 than it was over Moyai at 5-10. And no doubt about it, and you see uh, Michaela Johnson just kind of disrupted the rhythm there of Katie Dalton, and that's kind of what they've been going to. They've gone to her a lot in this first, sec third, second half. Maddie Loftus crunches into a Western Colorado player in the left corner. There was a pump fake. Oh, they're going to review it. All it was was a pump fake, and ooh. Yeah, I mean, there's some. It, it there's looks, it looks bad, and and and. Yeah, and there's certainly. It, it, it looks bad, you know. Seeing that replay. It's hard to. I think you know they may have to just go by, the letter of the law here because there was, Loftus knee, made contact in the chest. And it was obviously certainly nothing intentional. No, it just know. was a pump fake, and she left her feet, and then. Erickson pump faked, Erickson pump faked, and, and, and as she realized that Loftus was gonna go up to block the shot, tried to dribble to her right. Well, Loftus was trying to avoid running into her, so she went to Erickson's right as well. And so they kind of just met there, both going the same direction. Excuse me, that's not Erickson, that's... It's Coleman, Coleman Samantha yeah. Coleman. So as you see there, she pump fakes and goes to the right. Loftus it, it, is trying to avoid it, her, but they just go to the same spot and... Uh, it, it looked a lot worse from the other angle because you could see the knee kind of go in there. From this angle right here, then we're not going to see it again. They take it away. But from that other reverse angle. And obviously, I, I know it looks bad, but they, they certainly need to take yeah. into account uh, intent. Intent. There, uh, there was no intent for Matty Loftus there to, to see See, this it. reverse angle here looks is interesting. See, that reverse angle looks a lot worse. I think, the, I think I heard him say the word common foul. Common foul, two shots. Common foul and two shots because Dixie State is over the five fouls. And I, and I think that's the right call. Um, Honestly, I wouldn't have been shocked to see it go the other way because no. in, in today's day and age of replay, and, and you can go and you can look at everything, you see a lot of things drawn up and called by the letter of the law. Is there contact in a certain area in a certain way? And, and, and if there is, they have their hands are tied, whether the intent is there or not. But I think they got it right in this case. Yeah, and I, and I agree with that. Certainly, obviously, you know, anything to the face or the head or neck area has to be considered. But I think you also have to consider intent at, at some point. I mean, you know, sometimes you're just going to try to swat the, swat the ball or block it or something, and you're going to miss and come down on someone's face. You have to consider intent, and I think that's what they ultimately came down to on that decision. Coleman will make both free throws. and. Just like that, it's a 14-point game, 46-32. Western Colorado has scored nine points in the third quarter, all from the free throw line. Franks to Kesley Stevenson, left wing to Olsen. Swing it to Kesley, passes up a three, instead drives inside. No. Couldn't get the runner to go, and here come the Mountaineers. Cooper. Top of the key. Inside Dalton, working on Johnson. Johnson gets the block, and Dixie State has it. Ahead to Olsen. Olsen back to Pavlika. If you're Dixie State, you ought to you know, take it right back in the same way and, and make sure you're getting those same calls on your end. Pavlika kills the dribble, needs somebody. Will pass it to Stevens, so she gets it back on the right wing. Screen coming from Allie Franks, she rejects it. Drives inside, the runner with the right hand, offensive foul. That'll be the third on Pavlika. And that brings us to the media. 4.36 to play in the third. Dixie State 46, Western Colorado 32. Take the one-minute timeout and come back on the Trailblazer Basketball Network.
4.36 remaining. Welcome back inside the Burns Arena. Trailblazers leading at 46-32. Dixie State being outscored 9-3 in the third quarter. And Western Colorado over the first five minutes of the third quarter is yet to convert a field goal. Yeah, yet to hit a shot. It's They're 0 for 4 from the field. It's and for all been from the free throw line. They're 9 of 10 from the free throw line in this period. Already eight personal fouls call on Dixie State just past five and a half, just past five minutes gone in this third quarter. Just three called against Western Colorado. 46-32. Foul trouble could become an issue for the Trailblazers. Here's Dalton inside. Missed it off the window. Tapped around. Stevenson will chase down the long rebound. Over to Pavlika. If you're Dixie State, got to find a bucket here. Calm down. We'll see what they talked about during the timeout. And see if they can get something going. Pavlika. To the left side looking in and it's tapped and stolen. Try to throw it over Dalton instead of using the bounce pass. And here come the Mountaineers. To the right side, Coleman. And Coleman loses it, but it's tipped out of bounds. And Dixie State will remain on defense. Ashley Greenwood will check in. Maddie Loftus will check in. Pavlika. And who's coming out? Olsen. Got to have somebody come out. Can't play with six. Dixie State might want to, though. Might want to at this point. Right at this point to try to keep this 14-point lead. They'll swing it. Mountaineers with possession. Erickson inside Dalton. We'll try to work on Johnson. It's blocked away again into the hands of Kesley Stevenson. Probably could have called a reach on Dalton there again, reaching in on Stevenson on the way up the floor. No whistle. Greenwood. Tripped. Keeps the dribble alive as she goes to the ground. And here we go. All sorts of reaches going on right now. No whistle. Stevenson inside will miss it Johnson offensive rebound put back yes push to the ground afterward she'll get back up and jog back down the floor trailing the play mismatch inside on Dalton and she didn't try to use it instead they'll turn it over Dalton I don't think realized that Michaela Johnson was not there she had Allie Franks guarding her could have gone inside on Franks yeah the 5'10 frame of Allie Franks and she had her low in the she post she passed there it back out well. Yeah, she had her deep low in the post, almost in that low block, just barely above the restricted circle. If she makes a post move there against a shorter defender, she's yeah. got a great look at the rim instead of turn it I over. I don't think she realized that Michaela Johnson was trailing the play. 48-32, Dixie State with it. Johnson on the right wing and a whistle and a foul inside. Dixie State players, coaches, fans saying, finally. And we're going to get Samantha Coleman as uh, Kesley Stevenson was trying to post her up down low. And you see Coleman just gets that left arm tied up with Kesley Stevenson. And they get her for the personal foul. Mountaineers will go to Kanzler inside. Dixie State will answer by putting Stevens into the game. Greenwood to Franks, left wing. Top of the key back to Greenwood. Will bounce to Loftus. To Franks, lost it, regains, drives inside, and it's fouled on their way to the basket. Two free throws coming for Allie Franks. They're going to get Samantha Coleman once again on back-to-back -back possessions. You see, nearly lost it, Allie Franks, and then she gets to the basket, and Coleman tries to get over to take the charge, but she's still moving. He's not able to get her feet completely set, and she kind of leans into Allie Franks there as well, trying to draw the charge, but Franks goes to the free throw line for two. First free throw is up and in. Forty-nine thirty-two, Dixie State, seventeen point lead again. Second one up and in for Franks. Fourteen points on the night. Western Colorado still without a field goal in this quarter. 0 for six from the field. Dowd working on Franks. Top of the key now, Tatum Coleman. Looking inside, here's Kanzler working on Stevens. They both fall to the ground. Ball's loose, no whistle. Mountaineers pick it up. They'll give to Tatum Coleman. Coleman into the paint. A runner and a jump ball going to be called, and possession going to stay with Western Colorado. Yeah, good defensive stand there for Dixie State. Just six seconds on the shot clock as you see the replay here. Looks like oh, yeah. Ashley great Greenwood. Play. I didn't, job. You couldn't see that from our angle. It was blocked. A great play from Greenwood. A lob into Kanzler, a jumper in the paint, banked it, rimmed around and fell off. Greenwood the rebound. Dixie State an 18-point lead again. Franks 
Looking inside, Greenwood scores it. 20 point lead again, 52-32. Two minutes remaining in the third quarter. And just after all that, I mean, you've uh, played not very great in this third quarter. You're back to your 20 point lead that you had at halftime. Tatum Coleman working inside, will kick it to Dowd, left wing, she'll fire a three. No, ball is tipped around and into the hands of Samantha Coleman. Offensive rebound. Coleman crossing over to the left, gets away from Loftus. Loftus falls down. They go over to Cooper. Cooper driving on Stevenson, handing off to Kanzler. She'll lay it up. No, Stevens the rebound. Ahead to Greenwood. Dixie State wants to push the issue here. Greenwood to Loftus. Passes up a three. Stevenson will try it. No, banked it. But Stevens the rebound. Trailblazers were reset, and Coach Gustin says, no, calm down. Time in possession. 110 remaining and a 20-point lead in the third quarter, and then they draw foul. Yeah, and just like that, I mean, that's a silly foul. If you're Western Colorado, you're you know, 30 feet away from the basket, and Hannah Cooper gets her hand in the cookie jar there. Ashley Greenwood crosses over, and Hannah Cooper is committing the foul. It'll send Greenwood to the free throw line because they are in the penalty now. All things even out in the end. And Dixie State. Able to fight back into this one, and Greenwood the first free throw up and in. And Ashley Greenwood only played eight, nine minutes tonight, but her minutes have been very solid on the offensive end, on the defensive end. Yeah, she just brings a stabilizing yes. presence for Dixie State. She's never going to lead the team in scoring. She may not ever lead the team in assists or anything like that, but she's just a good ball handler that you can rely on, a very stabilizing player for Dixie State. Yeah, you know, and she could. She's starting point guard material, and it's just kind of – Getting accustomed to this college level. Coleman. Driving inside on Stevens. Shot blocked by Stevenson in the lane. Offensive rebound. And Dixie State will get the rebound on the putback miss. Here comes Greenwood. Greenwood looking inside. A great dish for Stevens. He missed the layup. He'll swing it around. No, it's, Steve, it's Franks. Faked me out. I thought she passed it. She still had it, 27 seconds remaining. That'll be a play that Greenwood and Stevens probably have a laugh about later. Greenwood saying, man, you took an assist away from me. It was a great pass. Here's Greenwood with four to shoot. Driving inside, misses the layup. And Mountaineers have the rebound. Here's Bacon. Three-point land straight away to Dowd for three right corner. No, Dixie State the rebound. Greenwood ahead to Franks, ahead of everybody. She'll catch it, miss the layup at the buzzer. She had to spin and shoot quickly, and she was in the front of the hoop instead of the side and missed the layup point blank. But how about that? Western Colorado goes the entire without third a quarter field goal. without making a field goal. And if you're Dixie State right now, like I said, you didn't play great in that third quarter, but to have extended your halftime lead and held them to without a field goal, I mean, that's tremendous. You almost feel like, oh, Dixie State's not playing that well, but you come out, you don't score a field goal, and you're leading by two more points than you were at halftime you got to feel good about that tough, greedy quarter. Let's keep it right here through the timeout and kind of preview and, and talk about our SkyWest Airlines player of the game. You know, right now it's pretty neck and neck, Drake. And I think you got to talk about two different players. It's London Pavlika. She's 12, she got 12 points, 5 of 8 from the field. Uh, made her only three-point attempt. Eight rebounds, six assists for Pavlika and a steal. Did have a couple of turnovers in that third quarter, so she wasn't running the point as much. Alec Franks has 14 points, 5 of 9 from the field, 3 of 4 from the free throw line. Three rebounds, three assists. Kesley Stevens, three for Stevenson, three for four from the outside. Where are you leaning at, the, at this point in the game? I know it's hard you know, between the third and fourth quarter to, to uh, pick one out, but we want to give SkyWest Airlines some airtime here and appreciate their sponsorship. Yeah, I mean, any, any of those three you could go with, and, and I think, you know, maybe split it between the three of them for right now, but I think one person that's maybe a little bit underrated right now is Chesney Stevens. She hasn't got a whole lot of playing time because she's been in foul trouble. She hasn't scored a whole lot of points. She's only got three. She does have, she does have six rebounds. And I think she's just provided a lot of defensive rim protection for Dixie State, especially late in that uh, third quarter. She got back into the game in the third quarter after picking up her third foul earlier in the period. And she was really one of the big, big driving forces to 
you know, prevent Western Colorado from getting a field goal late in that third quarter. And you know, they, they were going to Katie Dalton the entire third quarter. I mean, for the majority of that period, they were trying to get it down low into Katie Dalton. Chesney Stevens played great defense. We obviously know Matt Michaela Johnson came in and played very well in her stint as well. So I, I think, yeah. you know, maybe give it to London Powell and Rally Fanks for right now, but an honorable mention to Stevens. I think the answer is yes. Total team effort tonight for the Trailblazers. 54-32. Dixie State, a 22-point lead. Original starters for the Trailblazers, with the exception of Deshka Olsen, is in. Pass inside Stevens. She's hammered and fouled. Two free throws coming. Again, our Sky Airlines player of the game. Fly St. George Regional Airport. You're one flight from anywhere. Book today to fly to Dallas, Fort Worth, Phoenix, Los Angeles, Denver, or Salt Lake City. And all flights operated by SkyWest Airlines. That was a good find by London Pavlik there to catch Stevens on the roll. It was a tough pass. She was double teamed, but she throws it over the double team as Stevens misses the first free throw. But she was able to kind of thread the needle and get Stevens and look at the basket, and she gets to the free throw line for two. Stevens misses the first free throw. Brought to you by Vintage at Canyon Lands. Turns around, makes the second one. 55-32, 23-point lead for the Trailblazers. 9.35 to play here in the fourth. Cooper inside, bounces to the right corner. Three on the way, missed it. Cooper, offensive rebound. Will pass it to Dalton. Stripped out of her hands by Allie Franks. They're going to call foul. They're going to call foul. Looked like she got the ball and out of bounds. Maybe she got her, and they're going to give two free throws to Dalton. Well, this will give us a good look right here to see if she got ball or, ooh, I, I don't you love can't, that call. You can't really tell. see the hand wrist area from that angle. It looked clean. It looked clean from our angle, but yeah. obviously the referee was right there. Yeah. And, uh, you know, us with our headsets on, maybe there was something yeah, you could hear down there Yeah, we couldn't have heard a slap, maybe. Something. So we got to go to the one-ear method. Right. One headphone on, one off. <laughs> Dalton. Makes both free throws, 55-34. The Trailblazers a 21-point lead with 9.20 remaining. Again, on the floor, it's Pavlika Franks, Loftus, Olsen, and Stevens. Pavlika to the left wing. Stops the dribble, out to Franks. Franks has it tipped away, and then she pushes off on Dowd. And that's going to be the fourth foul on Allie Franks. I think there was certainly some contact, but I think she embellishes this one a little bit. Gabby Dowd, I mean, you know, it's hard to, it's hard to say because Franks does extend the arm, yeah. but, and she's got called on it twice already in this game, but I think Dowd does maybe embellish it a little bit. It's hard to say that that's the wrong call because you've been called on it two times earlier tonight. you got to know better if you're Allie Franks. Well, you know, by this time, the referees are watching that on her. Cooper takes it inside, and she's fouled by Stevens. And I'm not sure what, what's the difference on, on that play versus the previous play. I mean, Cooper is just, you know, maybe you say she's in the restricted area. It's restricted area, area and, and Stevens moving just a little bit. Yeah. And maybe that's, maybe that's the explanation, but that restricted area doesn't extend to the baseline. That underneath area where there's no line, that's just like any other part of the floor. And so maybe they declared that she was in that, in that lane there. First free throw. Is up and in. Second free throw is in. Dixie State gonna sub Michaela Johnson in. And Brianna Gillen is into the game as well. 55-36, Dixie State lead trimmed down to 19. Cross court pass to Gillen. Gillen gets it across the timeline with one second to spare. Hand off to Pavlika. Pavlika crossing over to the right. Hand off to Loftus. Loftus left corner to Deshka Olsen. Three on the way, short. Gets her own rebound. Nobody boxed her out. And she's tied up on the inline, or are we calling, no, yeah, it's a tie up. The arrow back to Western Colorado. Coach Gustin was having. A discussion with the official as they came back down the floors. Western Colorado has attempted 27 free throws in this game, 13 for Dixie State. 21 fouls called against Dixie State and 14 called against the Mountaineers. Inside Dowd, guarded by Gillen, and they're going to go quickly and a whistle and a foul again. 
against Gillen. They're going to say there was a slap on the arm, but boy, oh boy, it looked a lot like Gillen was just straight up. Yeah, I don't know what else you're supposed to do if you're Brianna Gillen. I mean, she's got good positioning. Her hands are straight up. She doesn't come down. I, I mean, that's just that's wow. terrible. That, that's, that one's that's a, that's a, tough a one. missed one. That's a tough one, and Dowd will miss the free throw. Ball don't lie. You know, and, and at a certain point, obviously, you know, you, you can talk about foul discrepancy, but usually the more aggressive team gets the benefit of the doubt, and, you know, certainly well, that's been worse than Colorado in this second half, but, you know, you got to kind of even it out a little, at least a little bit at some point. She missed both free throws, Jason. I'm going to let you say it. Ball won't lie. There you go. 55-36. Loftus inside to Johnson. And they're going to call an offensive foul. Johnson lowered the shoulder into the chest of Dalton. And we're 5-1 to one foul count with just over two minutes gone by. And once again, I, I think Katie Dalton embellishes this one a little bit. And if I'm... If I'm Coach Gustin right now, you know, I'm not going to be surprised. Pick up, do you need to pick up a tee right now? To, I mean, to it, try to swing things a little bit? I yeah. mean, insiders Dowd to Dalton. Dalton will jump at left elbow, missed it, didn't dare go in on Johnson. Pavlika ahead to Johnson. There's the whistle. And Michaela Johnson will go to the free throw line for a pair of freebies. And they're going to get Hannah Cooper there as she was trying to keep up with Michaela Johnson. Excuse me, they're going to get, not Hannah Cooper, they're Samantha going to get Coleman. Samantha Coleman. I saw the two and <laughs> immediately turned my head down to my scorebook here. But, you know, that, that's a good fast break run by London Pavlik. She gets the offensive rebound. She doesn't hesitate. She gets the ball up the floor quickly and finds Michaela Johnson, who's, you know, doing what you're supposed to do. You're taught as, as, as a, you know, a center, or the big guy down in the middle to get down the paint, run the floor, because you're going to get re rewarded on the other end. Pavlika does reward her, and she goes to the free throw line. Johnson makes the first, misses the second, and Dowd the rebound for the Mountaineers. Western Colorado has now gone as Stevenson gets a block out of bounds. Cooper tried to challenge Stevenson, and he get the block. Seventh block of the game for the Trailblazers. And Western Colorado still has not scored a field goal in the second half. Yeah, They're they've one gone of their last 16, one of the 13 last, minutes one without of the last a field goal 17. now. And there it is. Dow to lay it up and in. You knew it had to come eventually. Curse of the commentator, I guess. I mean, realistically, though, were they going to go the whole second half without a field goal? It would have been unprecedented. So <laughs> let's get it out of the way now, and now we can move on. Loftus trying to find Johnson. It's tipped and stolen. A 56-38 Trailblazers, an 18-point lead. Still too much of this game left to be too comfortable, though. Dalton inside. She's fouled. This will be free throw number 30 and 31. For the Mountaineers tonight. And for Dixie State, now you're, you're, you're getting a few people into some serious foul trouble. That's four on London Pavica. Ali Franks has four. Chesney Stevens has four. Brianna Gillen has three. Moiati and Stevenson both have two. So, you know, you're starting to get into a situation where you could see maybe, you know, three out of your five starters now with four free, four personal fouls. One more to either any of those, and, and you're losing one of your starters. So, Peyton Payro. Just checked into the game. She's the one that was fouled. Two free throws for Payro. Missed the second. Stevens the rebound. 56 39, 645 remaining. Western Colorado is steal. Cooper going to swipe it away from Pavlika. Cooper inside, path cut off by Stevens, and the pass tipped out of bounds by Pavlika. And London playing with four fouls. Going to leave her out there. Just going to stay in the rhythm of the game. Ashley Greenwood will be at the ready to check into the ball game, I'm sure. Inbound pass to Tatum Coleman. Coleman to the free throw line, a handoff to Payroll. Payroll. Working inside, pass stolen. Good stop by Stevens inside and a steal by Pavlika. And gets a layup off the window, couldn't score it, but a foul. We'll send Pavlika to the free throw line. 
And I thought for a minute that they weren't going to give Pavlik <laughs> we, we a, had a foul here. We might have had a riot on our hands and, inside the Burns Arena. I don't know if it necessarily was a late whistle, but it almost seemed like it was one of those that you weren't going to get a foul called on. And certainly a foul is a good job. <laughs> London Pavlik does a good job of keeping that ball on her left hip away from the defender until it's the very last minute to try to elevate and go to the rim. And that's when she gets fouled by Tayton Coleman. Makes the first free throw brought to you by Vintage at Canyonlands. Second one is up and in as well. 14 points now for London Pavlika. Substitutions for the Mountaineers. Katie Dalton will check in for the stretch run. And Jesse Erickson is in Pavlika, for the Mountaineers. Pavlika still on triple-double watch. 14 points, 9 rebounds, 6 assists, 2 steals now as well. This second half has taken a long time with all the free throws that's been attempted. Here's Tatum Coleman backing in on Pavlika, missed it. Pavlika kind of had to give her space so she didn't foul out. Into the left corner, three on the way from Jesse Erickson and just the second three-point make of the night for the Mountaineers, 58-42. Just the second field goal of this second half. I tell you, it's 6.59, now 7 o'clock local time here in St. George as Franks will drive inside, give a pump fake and score it after the pump fake. 60-42, Dixie State lead. Check my clock after the Colorado Mesa game last night. That game was over by 7.05. A runner for Cooper in the lane, missed it, and then knocked out of bounds by Stevens. We still have 5.20 of game time remaining here tonight. Dixie's obviously over the limit in fouls. One foul still to give for Western Colorado before they're in the penalty, before they put Dixie State in the penalty. Cooper holding. Finds Dalton, baseline left side, into a cutting Erickson, and she'll lay it up and in with the left hand. Five quick points for Jesse Erickson. Back-to-back -back field goals, a three in the corner, and then the layup there off a nice cut. Pavlika back door to Franks, and she'll score it. Ali Franks has 18. And this is getting back to what Dixie State was doing early on in the game in the first half, especially using those backdoor cuts to their advantage. Pavlika finds Franks. 62-44, Western Colorado the other way. And a foul against the Chesney Stevens. Yeah. And Stevens will pick up her fifth. She's done. And they have to and say. And you have two more players on Dixie State's team with four fouls. And that one, she was there, but she was in the restricted yeah. area, and that's going to be called a block every time. And, you know, she was there and set, but if you're in that restricted area, you're, you're not allowed to be inside there and draw a charge, and that's going to be go, that's going to go against Dixie State every time. 4.49 to go, fourth quarter, Dixie State leading 62-44. Let's take a 30-second timeout, just a 30, and come back on the Trailblazer Basketball Network. There is a place where rocks bleed and nature blushes on a battlefield green with envy, where dimples determine destiny and a tiny wooden tee holds the outcome in the balance. There is a place where friends are opponents and opponents are friends. Where the prize is elusive, the conquest is captivating, and the score is unsettled till the drinks are down. There is a place. Four forty nine to go. We mentioned it last night. By this time, last night, we were done. We were wrapping things up. And we got 449 of game time to play. Dixie State an 18-point lead. We were talking during the break, and you know, we, you know, because of all the free throws Western Colorado has been attempting in the second half, you know, you kind of forget that you know, the home team's got an 18-point lead here. But there's just have been no real flow of the game. And and you know, the referees have called the game the second half this way the the entire second half. And so, you know, it disrupted the flow right from the start. And we've been, uh, we've been here a long time. Yeah, don't let the... Erickson don't, will knock in the free throw. Don't let the, the, the plethora of foul calls distract you from the fact that Dixie State has played great yes. defense in the second half, all the foul calls notwithstanding. And they, they've only given up, what, two field goals now, maybe three field goals in this second half and zero in that third quarter. So they've been playing great defensively. They just kind of have been the victim of a tight whistle here late. Both free throws up and in. And let me also say, I'm not saying the referees are doing a poor job. I'm not saying that at all. They've, they've 
They've come out and they've wanted to call the game in a very specific way in the second half. That's how they've called it. 62-46, a 16-point Dixie State lead with 4.30 remaining. Pavlika to Loftus. Now Franks. Franks will drive inside, hang, and she just got hit across the face. And there was no whistle. Coach Gustin saying, are you kidding me? And the referee just ran right by him and said, all ball. And Erickson will go down and score the other way. 62-48, it's a 14-point game. Eight points for uh, Erickson off the bench, all coming in the last couple of minutes for Western Colorado. Stevenson to London Pavlika. Franks has it knocked out of her hands. It's loose, and then she dives on it, and Coach Gustin will call a timeout. 3.48 remaining. Dixie State a 14-point lead. And the referee's saying, hey, hey, you know, Coach Gustin has called timeout. He never signaled how much of a... I mean, that, that, that's obvious right there. I mean, it looks to me like she got... I, I don't know. I, I might stand corrected after that one. Let's look at it Can again. Can see that one more time? Look at it again. Let's run it back again. Just look at it. Angle. I got a different angle. I thought the left arm of Allie Frank got hit. I mean, you Watch go, the right Dalton hand of comes Katie up. Dalton as she goes up. She gets the ball there, but I, it, maybe she I doesn't. I think it's clean block. <laughs> maybe she doesn't. It looked like from, you know, maybe from yeah. that angle you can't see if she makes contact with Allie Frank's I, left arm. I stand arm, corrected. Replay. Yeah. Hey, hey, guys, back in the truck, maybe let's not run some of these replays because make me look bad here. No, I stand corrected and happy to do so. 3.48 remaining. Dixie State has the possession, 62-48. Pavlika falls to the ground, keeps the dribble alive though, and may have gotten away with the double dribble. She literally stood back up and kept dribbling. Loftus will fire up a three as the shot clock expires. It'll be a shot clock violation. Yeah, I think you're right, Lynn Pavlika <laughs> did get away with a double <laughs> dribble there as she went to the ground, and, and I think the referee signaled, and that's what uh, head coach Lori Wessling is asking, how did she get up? Yeah, this is not the Harlem Globetrotters yeah, here. Yeah, and I think, I think the referee may have just thought she lost the ball or was tapped away by the defender. 62-48, Dixie State's got a 14-point lead. And a lead dwindling here. Cooper into the paint to Dalton. Will drive inside past Moyai. Throw up a reverse layup, missed it. Kesley Stevenson the rebound. And you kind of feel like that possession right there might have been you know, really critical for Western Colorado. They want to keep chipping away at this lead, especially if Dixie State scores here. Put it back to a 16-point lead. About a 16-point lead seems so much more than just a 14-point lead. Moyai, hand off to Stevenson, left elbow jumper, missed it. Rebound to Dalton. 2.45 remaining. Thinks he stayed a 62-48 lead. Cooper to Erickson. To Cooper, and she throws up an off-balance shot, and she'll bank it and score it. 12-point game, 62-50. Western Colorado going to take a timeout. 2.28 remaining. Look to see what it's going to be. It's going to be a 30, but let's take it anyway. 2.28 to go, 62-50. Dixie State a 12-point lead. 30-second break, and back on the, on the Trailblazer Fastball Network. All right, man, I need you to go deep. All right, I'll catch this one, I promise. Post route, back of the end zone. Got it, let's do it. We may not always play good, but when we want to look good, we come to the Dixie State Campus Store. Located on the second floor of the Gardner Center. We'll see you there. From the field, Dixie State shooting 52% from the field and yet just a 12 point game because Western Colorado is 26 of 33 from the free throw line. And Dixie State just 12 of 17. Western Colorado has nearly doubled the free throw attempts. Moyai, right wing, top of the key now Loftus. To Franks, right elbow, guarded by Erickson. And off to Pavlika. Over to Moyai, nine to shoot. Brianna, 
Swing to the left wing. A three from Stevenson. It rimmed out, but it's tapped into the hands of Pavlika. She'll give it back to Loftus. And Dixie State with time. We'll reset here now with eight to go. You know, Western still with a foul to give in a 12-point game. Not necessarily a situation you want to be in. Here's Loftus with one to shoot. Fires up a three. Missed it. Banked it and missed it. And that was a, as a shot clock expired. Off-bounds, leap and leaner, a desperation shot, and it nearly went in. Cooper the other way. Left elbow jumper, no. Kesley Stevenson the rebound. London Pavlik now with a double-double, 14 points and 10 rebounds. Behind the back dribble. And Cooper hanging on for dear life and whistled for the foul. Just the fourth foul against Western Colorado. I think all the Dixie State players wanted to go line up. They're saying, are you kidding me? 122 to go here. We're not the bonus yet? Yeah, with all the foul calls, certainly <laughs> it feels like you should be <laughs> in the bonus. And now a Western Colorado player just ran onto the floor in a live game situation and was not waved on. And they missed it. And, and they should. The I ball mean, was already being inbounded. And Western Colorado got a late sub to the table. And now they're going to bring her back to the bench. And this should Felicia be, Bacon ran onto the floor during a live game. And, this and it was six a, players on the court. Should be a technical foul. Should be assessed a technical foul, a team technical foul on Western Colorado. Like, And I think, you know, if they're going to get together and talk here, I mean, Bacon was late getting to the table, and, and the ball had already been handed to Dixie State to inbound. They buzzed the they horn, buzzed the sound. and so she just ran onto the floor, thinking that that means she could run onto the floor. And here, she runs on. We're going to see it, it right here's here. The ball is inbounded. Here's the buzzer, and here she runs onto the floor. I and, mean, that's, and she's on the floor with the ball in live play. That that's, has to be a technical foul. I mean, I don't know if they can – it probably isn't something that they can review, but that is absolutely a technical foul if you have a six player on the floor in that situation. Not only that, they buzzed on the scores table, they buzzed. Looks like this referee no. is seg signaling no, this. They're just confirming who the foul was on after all of that. Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. Just, Maddie Loftus at the line, try to make it a 14-point game. Loftus will make the first free throw, and she'll have one more. And the second. 14-point lead for Dixie State, so probably really not going to have any bearing on the game. But it's just another, you know, thing of these referees that have really taken over this game. Dalton has it stripped away. Moyati the steal. And she'll get called for a travel. It was double teamed down there. And that's the 20th turnover of the night for Dixie State. Just nine turnovers for Western Colorado. And yet Dixie State a 14-point lead. Dalton will lay it up and in. 12-point game again, 64-52. Loftus across the timeline and is grabbed and fouled by Tatum Coleman. And, and Western Colorado is going to go back and look at this game the same way that you know, the game hasn't been as close as Dixie State's game last night. They're going to go back and look at this game the same way Dixie State looked at the Colorado Mesa game last night. You know, 12 of 54. Dick Western Colorado, as Loftus makes the first free throw. Mountaineers have 12 more field goal attempts than the Trailblazers in this game. And Loftus makes the next free throw, 66-52. Dowd will check in. Believe it or not, that was the 33rd and 34th free throw attempted in the second half alone, Carrick. I mean, it, there's just like you said, there's been no flow. It's been a whistle almost on every single possession. Yeah, it's just it just it's tough as a player to get into a rhythm and I, in that I, situation. I understand calling the game close and not letting him get out of hand, but, you know, there's something to be said that you can almost call a foul on every single possession 
of any basketball game. And I mean, obviously, you know, you can't do that because the spirit of the game is to try to keep the game going and, and get, into a, get, into a, get into a flow. But, you know, and, and I understand that, you know, you got to try to keep the game tight and, and you know, call it, call it as you see it. But, you know, you also have to defer a little bit and, and say let's let them play just a little bit more. 66-52. Mountaineers turned it over and now have committed a foul. Pavlika will go to the free throw line with 38 seconds remaining. And we still got a men's game to play here. Let's get this thing going. Pavlika up and in. Free throw is good. And in comparison to the first half, I mean, 13 for them and, and seven. So the 20 free throws in the first half uh, for both teams combined. And this is now going to be 35 and 36 free throws almost double out of the first half and I thought they really did a good job in the first half but it's just been too tight here in the second half. Here's Bacon. We'll hand off to Coleman bouncing inside Dalton missed it at the bucket offensive rebound Coleman put back yes. That's Tatum Coleman on the put back basket. Franks it's going to get called for another push off. And Dowd has drawn almost every push off, and that's her fifth foul. Eighteen point five seconds remaining, kind of the cherry on top. And and I mean that's kind of just if we're gonna wrap up this game and the way that it's <laughs> that's been how it had to end, right? That's <laughs> a, a perfect scenario. Five fouls called another things today. Four of them have been of that same variety. I mean, that's just kind of the way that it's been called. You don't typically see four similar fouls on, on the same person in the same game. A runner in the lane for Payro. Missed it, Dixie State the rebound. Western won't foul, Dixie State will dribble it out and finally we hit triple zeros. Dixie State will win it in a game where we saw a total of 46 fouls called in the contest combined. The Trailblazers emerged victorious, 68-54. And let's proceed right quickly into our Guru Sports Grill post-game report. Trailblazers win at 68-54. We'll be joined by a Dixie State coach momentarily. Uh, not sure who we're going to get tonight, whether it's Coach Gustin or Coach Quinn. Looks like it's going to be Coach Quinn or the post-game duties tonight. He's putting down the clipboard, and she's going to hop. Here, we'll get this cord out here a little bit farther. Scoot that out. So many cords right here. we go. we got Coach Quinn joining us. Kaylee Quinn joining us in the post game. Can you hear us? Everything yes. working okay? Yep. Yep. Coach, kind of a hard one to find a rhythm there in the second half with, with all the fouls called on, on both ends. But, uh, man, what a first half it was, and then what a second half you know, for you guys' team to you gotta keep their heads through some of those fouls and to finish this thing off and, and to bounce back after a tough night last night with a big win tonight. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, having a tough loss last night, we absolutely needed this win today, and the girls needed it as much as this program did. Uh, the fouls were definitely a problem for us throughout this entire game. I think, I think they shot like 35 free throws or yeah, something Yeah, 33, like 33 for the game. That's half of their points right there. So uh, going through the foul difficulty, I mean, we persevered. We did yeah. our game plan, and we came through. And talk about the first half. You know, last night one of the struggles was we're getting looks. They're just not falling, mm -hmm. and that's frustrating as a player. You know that. You're, you're yeah. a former player. You know how the nights like that go. Um, but Dixie, you know, your players came out here tonight, put that behind them, and they really shot the lights out in the first half. And you just talk about the execution and how everything was clicking in that first half. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the ball's going to fall. Uh, last night it obviously wasn't, but today we got it to fall. Um, it's confidence, uh, having confidence in our team, confidence in the teammates of everybody. Yeah. Um, again, they stuck to the game plan. We executed our offense well, and we won. Coach, it seemed like in that third quarter, I, I'm not sure if you've seen the stat sheet, did not allow a field goal in that third quarter. Your defense did. It, it seemed like a lot of times for them, defense, for them offensively, they were trying to pound it down low, giving it to Dalton, and try to have her make a play. Speak to a little bit about your defense, especially Chesney Stevens, Michaela Johnson, that were able to disrupt their kind of offensive flow in that third quarter in which you didn't allow a field goal. Yeah, so their dribble drive motion, we just had to slow that down, get them to the rim, and then after that, they tried to pound it into the post. And with our post, we just have them rim protect, rim protect, rim protect. Anything towards the rim, it's their job to protect that. Um, getting the guards to miss a bunch of shots, and then 
having the guards have to dish it out to the post and then our post handling their posts. Certainly seemed like in the second half, Western Colorado came out and was trying to be much more aggressive defensively. And you guys were kind of able to weather the storm there, especially that third quarter, it almost seemed like the momentum had shifted, but yet you looked up at the scoreboard and you led by 24 or 22 at the end of that third quarter because you were able to kind of weather the storm and battle through their defensive pressure. What were you doing offensively to get you through that tough time? I mean, that first half helped out a little bit weathering that storm <laughs> in the second half. But um, honestly, we're going to take hits. Like basketball is a game of runs. We're going to hit, they're going to hit back, and it's whether we're going to get back up and hit. So we took their hits. We executed our offense, and we executed. So. Congratulations on the win tonight. Well, you know, individually, you had some players really step. You know, it's good to see Kesley get out there oh and, gosh, and knock yes. those three threes down. And you know, she's been having good looks. She's not hitting. That's frustrating the players. She had a good night. And you know, we talked about post players as well. And you know, Michaela Johnson came in and gave 12 big minutes tonight. And mm -hmm. you know, it was really one of the only post players you had tonight that gave 32 on the other side. Katie Dalton really any trouble. You know, she came in and, and performed well. Felt like tonight was one of those nights where. You know, yeah, you're going to look at the score sheet, and you're going to see Pavlika and Loftus and Franks in double figures, but everybody tonight contributed something, everybody that, that touched the floor, and it was a total team win tonight. Absolutely. Coach uh, emphasized having the bench ready when we needed them, giving us that spark, and they absolutely did that for us tonight, which was crucial in this one. We'll let you get back to your team and go celebrate with them. Now you get to go out on the road for four games, and good to get that win tonight, at least to go back onto the road with. So, so congrats. Excited. Thank you so much. Assistant coach Kaylee Quinn joins us, uh, joined us here in the post game report. Great comments from her, and you know it's, it's funny. We like talking to the head coaches, but I love, I love getting to know these assistant coaches as well, as they they contribute such a, a high, you know, a, a amount to these teams. And, and Coach Gustin realizes that. I love talking with these assistant coaches, and they they all have really good things to say. And hey, what a win tonight for the Trailblazers to bounce back from a tough one last night. Uh, can report. Fort Lewis, a 72-68 win over Colorado Christian. The Cougars made it interesting late. Um, Westminster has defeated Colorado Mesa 55-51, so undefeated in conference play no more are the Mavericks. 113 to play. CSU Pueblo has Black Hill State on the rope, 65-61 in Pueblo. The Trailblazers win this one. Drayson, let's take some final comments from you before we wrap this thing up. Yeah, you know, it was, this was just a really gutty, gritty win and all those types of you know, words that you can use associated with that kind of win. And, and you know, you grinded this one out. It almost felt like, you know, I, I always hate to say that one particular game in the regular season is a must win, but this one certainly felt like you needed to get this win, especially against a good team here at home. You just dropped one against Colorado Mesa, one that, again, you feel like you've had a chance to win that game late as well. So, you know, you, you also got to think you got to get these wins here at home because you got to go on the road in a couple of weeks and play Colorado Mesa on the road and play Western Colorado again on the road and you can't really afford to lose both of those games at home and on the road you got to at least hope for the season split they certainly accomplished that tonight at least with western colorado it'll give them a good game plan to what they can do in a couple weeks when they match up with them in gunnison let's name an official uh, skywest airlines player of the game we talked about who we thought it might be earlier i, I think tonight i mean she did end up fouling out but i think you got to go ali frank seven to twelve uh from the field three rebounds, three assists, and she does end up with four turnovers. Those are all those offensive fouls. I mean, she does end up with those four turnovers. Pavlika has another double-double. She goes 16 and 10, but Allie Franks tonight, uh, you know, she's your senior leader. Anytime you can get her scoring, it's huge for your team. Yeah, she, she was tremendous, and I think she really kept you know, a lot of the momentum for Dixie State, especially in those that third quarter when they were kind of having some offensive struggles with the defensive pressure being supplied by uh, Western Colorado. So she was really kind of the contributing factor, obviously the leading scorer uh, for uh, both teams with 18 points. Uh, she's just a, been one of those reliable scorers you can count in, uh, count on night in and night out. Obviously, London, London Pavica fell just shy once again of a triple-double with 16-10 and seven assists. She also chipped in two steals as well. So a good team out yeah. from Dixie State. I think we give it to Allie Franks. She was tremendous tonight. Trailblazers win it. 68-54, a bounce back victory. And we're going to step away. That'll do it for our women's broadcast. Thanks, Drayson, for coming by, calling game with me. And thanks to our CEC TV crew and Martin Kelly back in the Radio Dixie 91.3 FM studio. Remember, we got the men's game coming up right here on these same channels. We'll take just a short break. And, uh, and then come right back with the men's game on the Trailblazer Basketball Network. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the men's game here in a few minutes.